Welcome to Waku Radio, where we like to live fearlessly. On this segment, we teach you how to become the best version of yourself. I'm your co-host, Seabass, and we got your host, Kobe. What's up? What's up, guys? Welcome back to Waku Radio. You heard the intro from my boy, Seabass. On this episode, we're going to be discussing a few things, bro. We're going to talk about or what it's like to stay on your purpose and how to live the best version of yourself. Dude, so before we start, make sure you hit the notification button, like, comment, and subscribe. If there's some topics you want us to talk about, how to live fearlessly in, let us know, and we'll answer it for you. Yeah, so, man, we had some uh, pretty interesting things going on in the media right now. For example, um, we, we just want to break this apart first before we start discussing on the, uh, the self-help portion. But China just brokered a deal between the Middle East for Iran and Saudi Arabia. What, how, that's crazy, dude. Do you think there's going to be a war soon? You know what? I was, so I was reading this article, and uh, they were saying that they're, they don't want to really break ties with the U.S. either. Mm -hmm. As far as Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia, I forgot who's on whose side. But basically, what, how, from the article, what, they were, what I read is that they felt like the U.S. wasn't doing their part to look at everyone's interest, you know? And China jumped in on this because they're part of the Silk Road. And that's like a big structure for their economy and stuff yeah. like that. So China, they want that shit to fall apart because if that falls apart, that ruins their economy as well. So that's why they decided to uh, hop in. And for the longest time, China decided to uh, wanted to stay away from conflicts mm. and just kind of focus on their business, their business, basically. Right. You know, they're on their path. And but I guess it got to the point where, you know, with the war in Ukraine and Russia and the it's tensions crazy. starting to yeah. rise that now they feel like they need to hop in to make sure their economic interest is safe in that type of standards and stuff like that. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, they are. I mean, tech, no one's really talking about it. And we try to disclose this all the time. But technically, China is the world leader right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I know America doesn't want to give up that status symbol, but it is true. They have the most money. They have the best economy right now. Well, and well, well you ahead. know what's been happening, though? So basically, while America was doing all these, you know, trying to, you know, put their the U.S., you know, whatever, into other countries and stuff like that. Yeah. China was just basically focusing on building their own economy. And U.S. was funding that economy because mm -hmm. a lot of Chinese money is from America yeah, because, you know, manufacturers want to go there and get right. money. And they actually found out that they would even give away trade secrets so they can get a tap into their Chinese market and yeah, stuff like course. that. And I was actually watching another video that actually really was crazy. So Discord. Um, do you know how Discord makes its money? How? Oh. So most of it's free, right? And there's a, a subscription breaks for Nitro, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's not really how they make their money. They make their money through investors. So it's typical like Silicon Valley type business mm. stuff where you- uh, Tech company. Yeah, tech company where they build this following basically mm. and then they sell the following. So they sell information. Well, in their, in their, they technically don't, but there's some things that they do. They don't sell it outright just to anyone. Mm. They, they give out some information. If you look in their like uh, uh, fine print and stuff like that, their information is that they can give it out to investors and uh, other parties that to promote Discord to gain more following. Oh, I see. So you know who's a big following? Who's a uh, a big uh, big supporter of fundings? Uh, China. Uh. But the company is uh, Tencent. It's called Tencent. Oh yeah, yeah, Tencent yeah. Gaming. Yeah, Tencent Gaming. But that's mm. you know who funds Ten or who, who owns Tencent Gaming? Yeah, China. The, the government itself, not yeah. just a Chinese corporation. It's yeah. the government itself, the CCP that owns Tencent. Right, right. And Tencent actually is invested into a lot of companies out there. Yeah, they started PUBG. Mm -hmm. They started the, the, that, uh, TikTok, and that's why yeah. TikTok's under uh, uh, scrutiny right now in courts and stuff mm -hmm. to get rid of. Right. Uh, WeChat was the same way, and they tried to ban WeChat. Yeah. Um, and now Discord is, is actually, Tencent is one of their biggest um, contributors, wow. like 35%. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, that's funny that you say that. I was literally just checking out the most popular websites visited in all like all internationally, mm -hmm. and the most popular one I believe was like Google and uh, you know whatever. I can't remember the whole list. Discord was on like the top twenty, and I was like, holy shit, Discord yeah. is up there. It's insane. I mean, along with a couple of other web uh, Chinese websites, Russian websites, Google, Pornhub, stuff like that, like porn websites too. Yeah. But like that's a given, right? I just wanted to see who was on the top list. Like who 
who are people like going to directly every day? And it's crazy that you say that because Discord was on there. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, holy shit. And it did say China too, which was actually pretty interesting because I never, I yeah, never so, thought about so that. So there's the basically... I'm wondering, I, I'm wondering if there's any privacy laws that is broken because they're doing that shit with TikTok. So I'm wondering if they're doing that stuff with D Discord. Well, as with well. Discord, Discord has that fine print. Discord says in the in the disclosures or whatever, yeah. it says it won't sell your information and stuff like that. Mm. But it will share information with investors or other companies to gain more funding for uh -huh. their company. So it's like, hey, it's fund, fund me more money because I'm giving, I'm look at all the following I have. Right, right. So it's like a little loophole that a lot of people miss, miss look. So technically, yes, they don't sell our information, mm -hmm. but to their investors and stuff like that, they're, they're gonna have to give it so they get more investing and stuff like that. So technically that's how it works. And that's why uh, I think uh, when Google tried to buy a Discord uh, for, I don't know how, it was millions of dollars, mm -hmm. Uh, Discord didn't want to sell it to them because they're still getting funding from the Tencent, basically. Yeah, and then I was looking at Tencent. Tencent's, like, invest into a lot of, like, major gaming companies like Blizzard and all these yeah. other things, too. Yeah. And then I even saw that uh, Tencent's invest into, like, Disney. Yeah. Uh, Disney and all these other things. And it's like, dude, that's... And then, and, and, dude, at the end of the day, I think what's going to happen is that... Well, actually, I don't... It's funny because... I think China already owns, like, like when you say Disney, I think about the Hollywood market, right? Mm -hmm. So I think China already basically is one of the biggest contributors to Hollywood, if you oh, think about are. it. Like, when, um, oh, fuck, who was that actor? Was it John Cena or somebody who... It was John Cena. I believe, yeah, they, yeah, he said something that offended, you know, the Chinese. I think it was John Cena. Yeah. And then he had to re No, 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 that was Taiwan. He, he oh. offended something about Taiwan, and then he had to publicly come out and, and apologize in Taiwanese yeah. or Mandarin or whatever it was in order to get his mm -hmm. recognition back. But the fact that, like, he had to do that in order for his movie to do good... Like, you know that the Asian, like Chinese market is very, very powerful. Yeah. So in order to even like think about it, I, they could technically be invis invisible to like uh, investors. Mm -hmm. I mean, f the fact that Biden and Hunter Biden were getting funding and sending money back and forth between China and them. I'm sure like at this point, China probably owns the U.S. without us really looking. Well, that's what that was. About, that was the point I was getting to. We basically lost the war that we don't even know we had. Yeah. You know? And this is this whole pro this whole uh, plan that China's doing. It's been planned out for years. Oh yeah, this is the hundred year anniversary or something yeah. of their fucking communism, yeah. and they're planning by what twenty forty nine, yeah. which is exactly hundred years or from the nineteen forty nine or whatever, mm -hmm. that they will have full control over like the U S or the world market basically. Yeah. I mean that's what uh with the BRICS where it's like Brazil, China, Russia, mm -hmm. now Saudi Arabia and Iran. They're all teaming up and all that stuff. I mean, dude. The U.S. economy is based on debt, yeah. While their economy is based on oil and gold now, yeah. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Right? We don't have the gold standard anymore, no, so no. we can't technically do anything. So it's like it. they're they're we're here playing checkers, yeah. And these guys are playing fucking chess, yeah. You know, like this is not something that's like, oh, hey, let's just do this tomorrow. This has been planned down for hundreds, or not hundreds of years, but years. I mean, it could have been. It, it could, could have been knows, generations yeah. of planning. I mean, that's think about the mm -hmm. the traditions of like like not just china but like asian cultures in general right like our our family is like super super serious about generational wealth and mm -hmm. and and just passing on the generational beliefs of everything so what what happens when like the countries like america like western countries like you know the uk and canada what happens when you start getting rid of old traditions right and you put in and and, and those traditions die it's not as strong anymore now you have to create new new culture you have to create new family morals and all mm -hmm. these things but China and Asian countries have stuck so strongly. Like, even think about it. Like, even Islam and and Muslim, you know, countries, they have stuck to their traditions, and they are still strong. Like, I mean, every, you, you see it all over YouTube now. They're saying, oh, haram, you know, all these things. Yeah. You know, habibis and stuff like that. Like, I don't know what the fuck that means, but I just see it come up, right? I don't know yeah, if yeah. I said anything <laughs> offensive. But I'm just saying, like, traditions are so strong. And if you have that, like, you can literally take over the world. Like, yeah. China has it. North Korea has it. Korea, Vietnam, uh, you know, all the other Asian, Philippines. We're talking about um, uh, the Iranians, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the, the Jewish people, the Jewish family, the Muslim culture. Everybody that has tradition has made it strong. Yeah. So that's why we're seeing It's because they're of, building a solid foundation, you right, know? Right, but what I'm saying is, like, you see a lot of like uh, influencers on social media. They're trying to save the traditions of it, and it 
it shows yeah. why. But we also have a lot of influencers that are not trying to save the, uh, the traditions of stuff, you That's know, because they're getting funded by, you know, Chinese media or yeah. whatever, you know, like TikTok or whatever, you know. And like this is a this is something that they implemented. I forgot what it was like fifth gener third generational warfare or fifth generation warfare. I forgot the exact terms, but it's uh, some type of generational warfare where it's no longer like hand to hand, bullet to bullet fighting, you know, it's uh I'm going to fucking take their culture down by like media, social media influencers, yeah. news and stuff like this. I mean, look, look what's going on throughout all the U S we're being separated yeah. from race to gender to fucking sex. Everything just separate, 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 you know, while in Asia and all these other countries like, no, stay together. We mm -hmm. got to be together. You know, I mean, there's so much pride in other countries for themselves. They're like, yeah. you know, well, I think also when it goes back to like, when you talk about like how the Western countries are when it comes to sexuality and all these things, you know, there's history that's been repeating itself over and over again. We've had history, you know, in the early 1900s where, you know, women didn't have rights and then the, the feminist movement came into play. And then that's when they started fighting for their women's rights. And then there's sexuality and the ability to step away from being a, a house mom and then get a job and shit. Right. So those things played into it as well. And then what happened? You know, we, we ended up in wars. We ended up in uh, multiple. We ended up in the world world war. We ended up in Vietnam. We ended up in all types of shit that happened. And then from that point, it really just settled down everything. Right. Mm -hmm. But if China's ideology is to break down society by promoting, you know, the LGBT movement, the politics, you know what I mean? Like the political hey, divide. Yeah. The, 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 pol the yeah. political division of like left versus right type of bullshit. Of course. Now America is not fighting for America anymore. America is fighting for their preference or their own beliefs mm -hmm. where we're going up a country that has traditions. We're going up against multiple countries yeah. that have traditions, morals and values. Now who's going to get fucked? Yeah, it's, I you mean, know what I mean? It, it's we ha so we we're one country, but we're divided in so many different segments. Like you could be fucking Republican, you could be Democratic, you can be liberal, you could yeah. be whatever. And then in those different categories, them individually are separated even more. Sex, race, gender. Yeah. On top of that. And now and then now you got like oh, you know, what happens when no one's synchronized? You can have millions of people, yeah. but if no one's synchronized and you come against even um like like the movie Three Hundred, that was the best example. Yeah. They had what three hundred soldiers, right, mm -hmm. in the movie, and they were all synchronized, and they were able to fight off hella motherfuckers. Yeah, you know. Well, yeah, no, but, you you make a solid point because like think about it. If we're not gonna fight as a team in in for our for our country, and then we go up against a bigger team who's stronger and more like they have the same beliefs versus somebody who's divided, it's gonna be easy for them to just conquer us. Oh, we're yeah. just gonna be a society that's that's only going to be fighting for themselves. Mm -hmm. And then when we see another uh, uh, opposing political view or so another group that doesn't agree with us, we're not going to help them. You're just going to let them get massacred at that point. Like you either drop your stupid beliefs, right? I'm not calling anybody stupid for having their own beliefs, but I'm saying you either drop your, your political views, your, your sexuality, whatever it is. And you make it a, you become a team. If not, then you get wiped out. Yeah. And there's no, no, there's nobody. There's no left. There's no right. There's no gay. There's no straight. There's nothing. Yeah, exactly. It's gone. Because everyone's fucking dead at that point yeah. or slaves or yeah. fucking worse in prison or whatever, yeah. you know, at that point it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. I but, mean, like what, what, what was going to matter? Like say we get invaded tomorrow, you know, if we don't unite, like what's the fucking point? What's, what's your gender going to have to do with fucking, you know, your family getting massacred? Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're trans or whatever, you're going to get drafted. Yeah, that's going to once the, the government's going to have to step into place and be like, hey, look, this is what it's going to take for us to try and win this shit. But I think you I think you're, you got a point when you say that, you know, China's been in the planning of this forever. I mean, think about it. It's been in dictatorship for a long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. And even Russia, even North Korea. And those are three power players, right? Yeah, we, we have the other guys on our team as well. But like, there's so much political debate, sexuality, you know, all of that, that I just don't see as being a strong team like it yeah. was back in the day. Back in the day, there was still a lot of masculinity. Let's talk about male masculinity and how females are becoming more masculine than men. What's your view on those things? Dude, it, I mean, it's true. I mean, like, look around society and stuff. Like, there was a... Uh... There was um, a rat study I, I looked into a little bit. It was the Utopia, f some some number, rat whatever. Rat theory or something. Yeah, some rat theory. It was done a while ago. There's some there's some things that are like discrediting it, which kind of makes sense. But overall, the whole study was uh, 
basically they made a utopia for these rats mm -hmm. and uh they give it everything food health care you know like if this rat gets sick they'll make it better okay. if the food there's no hunger or anything and like they didn't have work everything was pretty much civilized for yeah, them, yeah, yeah. you know modernized so eventually they started like you know segregating all that stuff and there was actually a, a part where male there was the good looking males that did not give a fuck anymore about reproducing or anything they just cared about their looks mm. and they started just like you know uh what is it uh Take hygiene and like just taking care of themselves yeah, yeah, basically yeah. and letting everything else like they didn't care about defending the females so anymore just grooming themselves yeah just grooming themselves yeah and the females became more aggressive at one point too because they had no one else to defend them a lot of the reason the the art the article or the test was so significant is because a lot of uh people were able to f relate it to our modern times living in close confined quarters you mm. know over each other and uh you don't have ha to go hunt yeah we don't have to go hunt you know like of course you know don't get me wrong some people are still struggling trying to get food and stuff but right. for the most part if you have the money you can go get well food. even if you have no money like here in the u.s you have you know the the, the government the government money. sugar daddy yeah yeah the government sugar daddy there's yeah. to help you out you yeah. know but uh you know the, the parts that they were saying this credit is that they're all lab rice so they don't have a family well this is another thing so the what what they try to say to discredit it was they're all lab rice lab lab rats, rats. Gotcha. <laughs> lab rice lab rats uh -huh. and gener generally what uh animals do is they'll have the, mo the the older generation of uh you know giving them information like here this is what you can eat and this is what you can't eat and stuff mm. like that and uh but because they're lab rats they didn't have that older generation teaching them which we can kind of see happening right now where we have the fathers leaving yeah. the families or not being able to attend to their kids you right. know because the mom is trying to take care of the kids more than the kid uh, the dad and they're like oh, i don't need no dad in my uh, much their more, life yeah much yeah, more yeah. independence yeah and now you're seeing the females becoming more aggressive and the dads are trying to become you know be there for the kids but there's no information being passed down you know yeah and you know, if you want to say the lab rats, you could say the same thing about the generations coming up, you know? Yeah, I guess you could. I mean, you could say that's our generation, too. You know, that that could be any of the generations. Because think about it. If, if if you have to think about living in the world that we live in, like today, mm -hmm. it's a blessing to live in the United States. A hundred percent. Yeah. So many people have given their lives and like so much more to come to this country in order to get government baby daddy. Mm -hmm. In order to have a chance to live the white picket fence in the American dream, right? But how hard is it now to obtain that? But also, I want to go back to, you know, go back to that. Let's say you, you, it's hard because I, I picture of it as, have you ever seen the movie, uh, shit, what is it? The Anonymous movie or uh, V for Vendetta. Oh, yeah. V for Vendetta where um, at the very beginning, or I think it's at the beginning of the movie where there was a, he was caught in a jail. Somebody was caught in a jail cell. And they, this person just came and fed them every fucking day. And then when the gate was open, they had the ability to run away. But they were so scared, they didn't leave the jail cell. And they were so comfortable, they didn't, they, they just they just were like confined. They were like, no, I don't want to leave. I'm just going to mm -hmm. stay here. I'm comfortable. You feed me three times a day. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I, I don't want to go anywhere. There was the, there was the, the flea. The flea experiment too. Have yeah. you heard about that one? Yeah, yeah. Where they put a they put a, the fleas in the jar and it basically sealed up the lid, the top part, so they can't jump high. And they took off the lid and then after like you know after a few days of being covered, the 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 fleas thought they only could jump that high mm. and they didn't want to jump out of it. You know. Right, right. Yeah, one, you you are your own limits basically. Exactly, guys. guys. If your mind is capped off, that's the only that's the highest you'll ever go. You ever you ever I I used to go to a lot of seminars and like you know, motivational shit, bullshit, but I don't know if you guys were into that, but they used to do this one exercise where they said, okay, put your arms up and reach as high as you can. Right. And then they just make us reach. Okay. Put your hand as high as you can. And then the next time they said, all right, now keep your hands up and reach higher. And then they, they do that again. And then it'd be a three times. Okay. Now reach higher. And then every time you, you were able to go higher and higher and higher, but at the very beginning, why is it the first time when you put your hand up is only this high? You can keep going. You just think to yourself like, oh, this is as high as I can go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Why? Because we're comfortable. Once you're in that comfort mind, you don't think you, you that's that's the ceiling that you give yourself. It's the same thing as like the plant will only grow as much as the, the pot that you put it in. The, the snake won't grow any bigger than the cage that it's in. That's yeah. it. I mean, as cliche as it sounds you know when they say you create your own reality you yeah. really do create your own reality absolutely you know like if you put these limitations you put these fears in your head like i can't do this or i 
I'm not allowed to do this or whatever. That's you limiting yourself, sure. you know? I mean, granted, you don't want to hurt anyone and stuff like that, but you know, like, who says you can't fucking become out, come out of projects and become super successful, you know? Of course. Who says you, uh, you know, you, you, you can't be manly without a father in your house, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's going to be harder, but it's, if you put the self-work into it, you know? Of course. You it's, can you can achieve anything. Of course, it's you know? all about self development. Yeah, and I, I was re I was watching this one documentary, and it was um, it was called Healing, right? And it was just basically just talking about uh how your mind can give you sicknesses and illnesses, yes. and how at the same time it can heal your sicknesses and illnesses. Yes. You know, they're saying yeah, modern medication is good for like instant injuries, like breaking your finger and stuff like that. But for disease and stuff like that, a lot of it's how you go into it. Like they were studying cancer patients, right? Yeah. And the cancer patients, the ones that were imagining that the chemotherapy was destroying the cancer cell and making it smaller and smaller and smaller, were had a higher successful chance of beating mm -hmm. cancer, never having it come back, compared to the people who were like, oh, this chemo is going to kill me. Right. This chemo is going to make it worse. Yeah. Blah, blah. I'm putting radiation in my body. That makes sense. Those people had less chances of, of getting rid of the uh, the cancer, stuff yeah. like that, you know? And, and, and we can see, you know, like, and even like, you know, athletes or whatever, you know, people break their knees, mm -hmm. their spines or whatever. And some people are said, oh, you can never be able to walk again. And they're like, no, fuck that. I'm going to be able to walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, the mind, I really believe the mind is so fucking powerful. It is. That if you believe it hard enough, it can achieve it, you know? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. They always say like the mind is the most powerful. Like we aren't using our full brain. Mm -hmm. The ability for our brain to function at a hundred percent would be incredible. Yeah. But the undiscovered like power of what we can do with our it's insane that's why like for example like i always believed in the whole theory or the whole slogan of self-made like you make all the decisions in your life let's pretend there's no heaven and there's no hell yeah and there's only one road which is the life that you live today let's imagine that from the very very beginning of your life you start learning Right? You just keep learning and you fall and you get down, whatever. Sir, sometimes personality traits come into those things and sometimes life does affect you in a certain way. But it's up to you, depending on how, how powerful your mind is, how you face those situations. For example, if you fall and you fall and you become a victim, you cry every time you fall. That's how you're going to be. Until the day you figure out, I don't want to be this way anymore. Mm -hmm. Fuck this. I'm not going to play victim. I'm not going to be a crybaby. I'm going to get out of that shit and fucking be a man or, or uh, somebody who's just going to get over it. But it's not going to happen until that day comes. Now, why I was saying this is because imagine this life you're just on. Every bump in the road is either going to determine if you're living on heaven or you're living in hell. Right? And that's how it goes. You can have hell on earth. You can have heaven on earth. Like if you think about some of the most successful people, some of those people have been through some of the toughest shit. And then they were able to overcome all of those tough obstacles. And now they live in heaven. It's heaven on earth for them. They get all the women they want. They have the money, the fame, the success, whatever, the love, whatever, the sex, whatever the fuck they want, whatever your goal is in life, you can get that. You can achieve that. And that's all through the power of your brain. Mm -hmm. But then there's people who play victim, who play like, oh, it's always hard for me, blah, blah, blah. Girls are never going to like me, whatever. Those guys are never going to be the ones that succeed. Yeah. Nothing. Like, I think about this, though. <clears throat> Hold on. Before we go. The last podcast that we were just discussing, right? If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. It's with the three girls that look like they're from Charlie's Angels. Anyways. Going back to it, they one of the girls said that penis size does not matter. One of the girls said that, and she was like, guys get too focused on penis size. It doesn't matter. Give me other things. Dominate me. Choke me. Like, pick me up. Do fucking things to me. Mm -hmm. They don't even think about it. Yeah, one girl said it mattered, but, you know, for the most part, yeah. again, I guarantee if this man that she met was on his purpose and within his masculine frame and was able to give her more than just that, it wouldn't even matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's so many ways to please a woman. Oh, if, I'm just saying. Dude, yeah, yeah. Heaven on earth or fucking living life yeah, in exactly. hell. It's just all about m mindset. But yes, there's so many ways. Yeah, there's so many ways to please women. We could get on that topic some other time. Um, but, you know, like, you got to believe in yourself. Yeah. You really have to believe in yourself, you know. Uh, a lot of things in my life, like, I'll say it, like, one, one, like, there'll be, like, one time in a year, whatever, I'll say, I want this, I want this in my life, you know. And... You know, I just believe in it, 
I don't know how I'm going to get to it, but somehow, some way I end up getting to it, you know, like even if it's small things, you know, like I remember like, I actually just thought about this earlier today. Like I remember I was like, cause we, we mentioned that one dude that was wearing a suit and it just flashed back to my head. I was like, in the beginning of the year, I was like, you know what? I want to have, a, I want to have a thousand dollars suit by the end of the year. Mm. And then, you know, I just did my thing and I just believed I was going to get it eventually. And then I just did my thing, worked, whatever, stayed on my path, stayed focused, you know, didn't let anything deter me. And, you know, by the end of the year, I was like, oh shit. I could buy my suit. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, fuck, let me go buy this suit. I only wore it like a few times. But, but that's, still. that's an important point, though, because like you made a goal. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing I want to make. I want I want to make sense of. I think there has to be a level of stubbornness inside you. Like we've t I've, I've tried to make a point of this when we were discussing on the podcast with, uh, you know, with. Uh, um, out, oh, with uh, what's, what's his name? Who? The, the two disabled. Oh, uh, <laughs> Russell. Yeah. Oh, oh. I, I try to make it a point on the podcast when we were talking to Russell and Bullet. Like when, when I said, you know, stubbornness is what probably is pushing them. Like the ability to be so stubborn that you don't want to give up on life. Like those are the same things. Like if your goal starts to fail, you need to recognize that it's failing. Right. But you can't just quit because if you quit, that's it. There's yeah. no more of that. What you got to do is you got to go back to. Uh, you got to go back to the drawing board and you got to be somewhat stubborn in order to be like, I'm not giving up on this. Mm -hmm. If it's not going to go this way, I'm going to go and try another way. And like, think about it. How many times have you done that? I mean, we wouldn't have this podcast if we let the things that got in our war affect us all the time. Dude, life shit happens all yeah. the time, bro. Like it really does. I mean, sometimes we'll put it off a little bit and we'll be off schedule, but we always try to make a point to get back on schedule. I know. And for those that are watching, we really love you. We really do. We wouldn't have this podcast without you guys. And we want to give a shout out to our boy, Andy. We noticed you commenting on all of our posts, man. Keep it up, bro. You know who you are. Yeah, we really appreciate that. Like, for real. Like... The comments and everything were like, damn, we're finally getting interactions and stuff. And I like tell Kobe all the time, like, yo, this is sick. Like, yeah. we're actually like creating a, like a family in a way, you yeah, know? Yeah, dude. It's and it, awesome. it's dope. And I just want to do a quick shout out to you, Andy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you know you. who you are. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, dude. We, we want to thank everybody else too. You know what I mean? But your messages go a lot farther. And if you guys want to support us, dude, comment below, man. Tell us your thoughts. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the no notification button below. And don't forget to stay on your path. And don't let no be an answer. Life of a hustler. Check me out. Uh. Life of a hustler. You see me on the road. I'm in hustle mode. Real estate mode.